I'll tell you a story. Because it goes to, to sales in person, too. And ultimately, we do meet most of our customers at one time or another. Okay? Or we should. Okay? If it's possible. I was in the mortgage business. I made a fortune in the mortgage business. After I got in trouble with the stocks, as you know, okay, I, was, I, was gonna, I had to go to jail. I spent 22 months in jail. And the fact that I have the life I have now where I go around the world and speak to massive crowds is a miracle unto itself. And it really, and it was a long way back to this point right now and a lot of struggle. And I sincerely hope that most of you will never have to know the, the, the crap that I went through. Being separated from my kids, and it was awful. It really, really, I hope you cannot empathize with me because it was awful, okay? But there was a window after I got in trouble and before I went to jail where I actually started a mortgage company and I built it into a huge company like in a year, which was not that lot difficult in 2001, if any of you know we're in the mortgage business. It was very easy to do, but I built it very quickly and I came up with this idea to go door to door for mortgages, because I used to be, I started off in door-to-door sales, my first thing. I said, I could walk down the street when rates had just dropped. I could walk down the street to any store, and the business owner must own a house. I'll just say, hey, what rate are you paying? And the guy will say, I'm paying eight and a half. Really, I could save you a ton of money. How hard is that to do, right? So I came up with that idea, and I wrote this little script, and I said to my partner, his wife said, come on, you come with me, okay, and we're going to go up to some place. Now, understand this. I want you to learn a lesson here. I had already was making $50 million a year for many years. I was in newspapers all the time. I was well known as the wolf of Wall Street, all this crap, right? And you would think that I was too proud maybe at the age of 40 to go knocking on doors. Uh Uh-uh. I was banging on doors till my knuckles bled. Never ask a salesperson to do something that you wouldn't do yourself. They won't respect you. They won't listen to you. And also, you can't possibly perform as a manager, as a trainer, at the highest level unless you have done it yourself. Okay? I think one reason you listen to me is you guys know I'm the real deal. And I'm not just, this is not theory. I use this to make hundreds of millions of dollars and turn morons into closers. Okay? It works. It works. Okay? So I took my partner's wife. I said, listen, I gave her a quick training. I said, I'm going to go down the right side of the street and you go down the left side of the street. Okay? She's like, okay, great. You know, she's a really nice girl, right? So she worked going to New Rochelle, where I think hopefully no one will recognize me when I walk in the door, right? So I go like, it's like 30 miles away. I have a little bit of pride left, all right? So I go down. The first person I walk in, it's like a diner. They're not, 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 not interested. Second person, DeRosa Seafood. I walk in, the guy behind the counter in a fish market said, hey, is the owner around? He goes, yeah, I'm the owner. Hey, my name's Jordan. I'm a mortgage broker. I'm doing reflies. What are you paying? He goes, um, eight and three girls. I like, are you kidding me? I can save you a ton of money. I open up my book, boom, boom. In five minutes, I closed the deal and made $8,000. Five minutes. $8,000, all right? I go down, two more rejections, the fourth door, bam, a half slot. I close the guy who was selling hairbrushes to make $11,000. On one street, in two hours, all right? I make my way down the rest of the street, no more sales, all right? I go to the other side of the street, my partner's wife, Shelly, the nicest woman in the world, okay? She walked around with a Bible. She was a really God-fearing woman, a great woman, okay? And I walk down, and I see her sitting on a bench crying. Okay, I'm like, I'm like, she's like, I'm like, what's wrong? She says, nobody wants any mortgages. They, they, they don't want anything. I'm like, what are you talking about? I just made 20 grand, Shelly. She's like, what do you mean? No, no, they, no one wants anything. I'm like, did you go to all these stores? She's like, yeah, I walked in every store and then they threw me out. I'm like, follow me, okay? I take her back to the first store, nothing. Third store, boom, I hit $8,000 in a jewelry store. The same store she walked in, I walked in five minutes or 30 minutes later and closed the person that threw her out. Next, three stores down, boom, a body shop. This guy, I forgot his name. I made 12000 in a body shop. She went into the body shop. She said, get out of here. No soliciting. Now, what was that about? It was from the first second I walked in the door and opened up my mouth. Bam. I was enthusiastic, sharp as house, and then most importantly, a figure of authority. It was something that came off in the first couple of seconds. You know who Jacob the jeweler is? Famous jeweler. Anyone know Jacob the jeweler? Okay, a couple. Famous big-time jeweler. So now I build this mortgage company, right? And it's rocking and it's rolling. And I'm like 45 people, and I'm making a lot, of millions of dollars a year, right? And I'm still going out, and I love selling door-to-door. I get off on it. So once a week, I would take three sales with me, and I'd go out, i just walk and knock on doors and make 50, 60 grand. Like clockwork, all right? So I go and said, I'm going to go to the jewelry district in New York. 
where there's just booths and booths and booths. Who, anyone from New York and Michaels, right? Where there's like literally 500, like, they're just a concentrated, and they're all owners. I'm like, what could be better than this? I'll make a bloody fortune. So I go into the jewelry district, right? And I go down to these three salesmen and tell I make $100,000 in an afternoon. $100,000. Finally, I loop around to the other side of the street, nothing, nothing. I walk into some really big thing, big store, right? And it's like one giant booth in the back. And I walk in with my little crew. I walk right up to some woman. I give her my pitch. And she's like, I'm paying seven and a half. And then she says a couple, she says, why am I talking to you? I'm like, what do you mean? Because I never talk to, I throw everybody out of the store. Why am I talking to you? It was Jacob's wife, Angela Arabov, okay? I don't understand why I'm talking to you. Before I knew it, I was upstairs with Jacob in his office. I made 17,000 refining their house in Forest Hills, Queens. I was at their house for dinner that night. They did not know who I was. They did not know who I was simply because my rap of confidence, the aura that I had, that I was sharp as a tack and I was an expert. Jacob told me to screw off. I was like, screw off yourself. I was, I was pacing him and leading, matching and mirroring, being just like him, right? Angela Arabot, to this day, okay, well, ne she never could see, I throw everyone out, but I did business with you. Why? Because the first second I walked in the door, I was different. I captured her imagination. So when I say to you, like, Hey, is John there? I ain't kidding. Okay, if you are a salesperson and you're hammering away, you got people on the phone, a big crew of people, just that alone will increase you up this much. Now, you're going to close sales, but no. But this is called the art of, ready for this? This is a great lesson. This is called, okay, this is called the art of, the word, I can't write. The art, I'm, a, I'm an author too. The art of not blowing it. That's what this is. Here's the mistake so many people make, okay? If this is your straight line, okay, and you're qualifying over here, and then you're presenting here, and you're closing here.